Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. And welcome to our inversion video. So this video is for more experienced practitioners. And you can add this video on to any of our sequences that we do um, on the site where we're not doing inversions. But it is for students who've already learned how to do Savangasana, shoulder balance, Shirshasana, head balance in your classes. This is not teaching you how to do those poses. So if you've not done those poses, if you've not been taught the, those poses, then this is not an appropriate uh, sequence for you to, to practice. Yes, and if you're keen to learn um, techniques, then there will be more videos on the techniques of the inversions very soon. Yes, we do have some tutorials on um, Shashasana and Tahasana. Yeah, we do. Them on, we? Yes. And just search them. Alright, so two poses which are going to prepare you for your inversions. First is Adam Kishwanasana. But before we do, Oh my equipment. goodness! Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you will only have presumably one mat, which is fine. We've got our mat stretched out here, but I'll just show you what you will have for your um, other poses. So when we do Shirshasana, we fold the mat into four, neatly folded into four. You can use your mat that, that you've got there to do that. Um, for your Savangasana, what we have here is four foam pads made into a platform. I'm just going to take those out of the way so you can see. I've wrapped them up into a platform. I'll try and drop them all out again. Um, I've wrapped them up into a platform. And you could have either a bolster, as I've got here, or a fifth foam pad for your launch pad. So Yes, yeah. sorry. The, the platform is really an important um, prop to use. So those of you who are experienced in inversions that you haven't used props, then please do use the props. Yeah, it's much better. You'll get a much better shoulder balance and it's safer for your neck. So our first pose is Adam Kishwanasana. So Leo is going to take her hands down to the floor. And also you can see this prone position. Now, those of you who struggle with lifting the body up, then of course there are other ways of practicing Adam Kishwanasana with your knees bent, coming into that shape. But this is really quite a challenge. It's really nice to build up your strength. One of the most important things about lifting the body from this position is drawing from the front body. So those of you who practice our sequencing Tadasana becomes really important in this prone position. You have to lift up through the center of the body. Tucking your toes under, as you can see Leo here, pressing down into your palms. Come up into Adam Kishwanasana, drop your head down. So as this is um, the start of our practice, it may be that, as Leo also mentioned, you're adding this on to one of our um, sequencing or it may be something that you're doing a little bit later on in the day because you haven't had time to practice your inversions either way, then you see that you're coming to Adam Kushwanasana a couple of times. So coming back down, this time coming from a kneeling position, bending your knees. So you're coming from this position and then going back up again. So just give yourself a, a couple of moments to unfold the body. So go and see that you're lifting up through the front legs and pushing the thighs back. And seeing that you're getting the action because we know we're coming for inversions, that the shoulder blades in between the spine is moving deeply in. So become aware of that area. And then we're going to walk those feet towards the hands and we're coming to the Uttanasana action. Taking the feet to the outer edges of the mat. So a wide Uttanasana. Now if you find it really difficult to touch the floor with your hands because of tight hamstrings, then of course you can put your hands onto bricks. But um, if you're okay to put the hands onto the floor, then keep them underneath the shoulders for now. And then see that you're lifting up through the legs and the 
through the inner and back thighs. Now I'm going to ask you to hold the back of the ankle now. So hold the back of the ankle as you can see here Leo is doing and try to lift up again through the centre of the body, through the chest, being sure that you're trying to work between the shoulder blades, keeping those legs absolutely strong and straight. Now when you unite the body in this way, you're preparing that front body for your inversions. So see that you're pulling on the legs, extending through the arms, extending through the front body and lifting up through the centre of the body. And then releasing the hands and slowly coming up. Okay, so we're coming for our first inversion. So we're going to grab the mat. So of course, as Leo explained, you will be folding your mat that you have. And then we're going to come for the pose. Now there's a couple of things I want to mention here before you go up, even if you're experienced. Um, it's always good to just prepare your wrist and make sure your wrist is in the right position. So you're going to be sure that you've got a nice folded mat and then interlock at the fingers. Now I want you to imagine that the the wrist bones are, are down strongly and I want you to see that you move the skin of the under forearm forward and back, you can see here. So without actually, you can see you're just giving the forearm just a little bit of manipulation there so that the area here becomes a little flatter. And this is really important because you need to have a broad base here. Although there's a sharpness in the bone, there needs to be a broadness. So if you're really tight here, then of course it's a little bit more difficult and we start to clench very strongly. Then when you put your head down, what I want you to do is to just lift your knees a little bit off the floor, just a tiny bit. And now lift the head up slightly and just let it dangle like a pendulum just down so that the neck is going down absolutely perpendicularly the sides of the neck and then place. Now the fingers, the thumbs are either crossed or one thumb over the other and then lift up and walk your feet in and however you go up. So if you go up to the wall that's fine, you can take your legs to the wall, you take one leg then the other, that's fine too or if you're bending your knees into your chest then that's fine too, as you can see Leo is coming into this action. So go slowly, be mindful, remember that Shishasana is a wonderful skill and it takes time. And then very, very slowly you're going to straighten the legs. So when you're in this pose, you have to be sure that you're getting your Tadasana. So, when you're in this pose, your forearms become your feet. So they have to push down strongly. Also, you have to see that your front ribs are not dropping. So there's a lot of length required in the side waist. And this is achieved from extending those legs up, so much extension into your heels, so that you create space between the ribs and the um, the hips. So that area, that middle area needs to be really extended and connected. Now the centre buttock needs to move in. So you have to have a little bit of a bite in the centre buttock so that it moves you in and up. So keeping that action. Now of course if you need it to come down then obviously you can come down before this uh, tutorial, this sequencing. Um, so please don't stay there through duress and strain and pushing. Just be there in a light, extended action. When you do come out of the pose, you have to be prepared to come out of it with control. So how Leo went into it, she went in with folded legs. You can come with one leg, two legs to the wall, whichever way you've been taught to do. Then softening the knees, keeping that connection in the centre of the body and slowly 
folding the, the body back to where you were. And just keep the head down. So if you have any, um, you know, any feeling in the neck that you need to actually extend it a little bit, then keep the chin extending forward just for a moment before you then finally release your head down. And just stay there for a few moments. So it's quite a, quite a big thing to go upside down on your head. So you just need to just rest for a moment before we come into the next inversion. So our next inversion is going to be Sarvangasana. So this pose we look at as a pose which is um, very quieting. It's not when it's hard to hold. So we have to try to improve this as time goes on. Leo's got a bolster which she's going to launch from. This is quite a key thing and maybe for some of you you're going to need this bolster to launch from. But you can also use a foam pad or folded blanket. You can also use folded blankets instead of the foam pads. So oh. if you don't have foam pads you can use a number of folded blankets but you have to have a platform that's about this size and shape. Yeah, no that's, that's uh, really um, informative. And when you come into this action, your head will be on the floor and your shoulders will stay on the support. So I'm sure many of you um, would have already practiced in this way. Okay, so Leo's going to come into it. What I would recommend is that you start with um, setting your timer for your head balance. It may be two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, whatever it may be. And your shoulder balance will be double that amount. So, for instance, if you have a three minute head balance, then we would recommend that you practice a six minute Savangasana. So, you can see that Leo's lining herself up here, her shoulders are on the support, and her head is off. So, she's going to come into Halasana, and I'm just going to go through a few points in this position. So, off you go. So if you are practicing with us, then you'll just have to listen to the instruction now. So Leah's got her feet to the floor, and this can be quite challenging. We find this in the centre that when people uh, are coming into this, perhaps really um, at the very beginning, they need to put their feet a little bit higher. We have a tutorial on Sarvangasana, so please do take time to watch that. So when you're in this position, you can see that Leo has got her arms behind. Now, she's going to bend the elbows and just have the fingers facing up like this. Because actually not everybody's going to have somebody to give adjustment to the shoulder when you're practicing by yourself. So this is a really nice way to adjust. So you press down with the arms because these now become the soles of your feet or the sole of the pose. So you press down into the arm and lift the pelvis up even more. Lift the pelvis up even more. And with this action, you can then take your hands to your back. It's really important that you get the action of the back. It rotates all the way over towards the, the, the legs so that actually you make space in the shoulder area. Then once you have the hands, the hands, the fingers you can see are facing one another. This is really important too because eventually you're not holding yourself up through your hands. You're actually using them there, there to give you a measurement of um, alignment and symmetry. So when you go up, you can go up one leg then the other. That's it. And then extend. So once you first go up, you have to start to scan the body like you would any standing position, like Tadasana, you would scan the body. So you have to see what's happening at the base. Can you feel that the arms are still in the same place and they haven't shifted? Because that's another thing that um, actually a lot of people start to shift one, or the, one arm or the other, particularly if there's a problem in the shoulder. So see that you're grounding down into the upper arms and walking your fingers a little bit further towards the next spine so that you get more lift and more extension. Then we have to find that space again, how we did in Shishasana. 
So you just see that you lift up through those inner ankles, inner heels, spread the toes and push the balls of the feet up towards the ceiling. So yeah, that's it. So they're very active. You try to make the feet active and broad and open so that it activates the shins, it activates the calves, it activates the legs completely. So keep in that action. Now you may notice that with the platform, it encourages this Jalahanda Bandha, but it encourages it in a gentle way where you're not flattening the neck completely. So this is the beauty of the platform. It gives you that opening in the back of the neck. So see that you are extending, lengthening, breathing, connecting, all of these things. So as you're in this pose, it's a very good pose to concentrate on your breath and the expansion of your ribs. So don't forget to breathe. Don't hold your breath in this pose. And as you breathe, see that you increase and broaden the upper chest cavity and keep that grounded action in the upper arms. So have one more extension up through the body, you see how you know starting to get that little bit of spurt because quite often when you, you're practicing, you can quite easily drop the body. So you've got to keep that alertness in the body for as long as you can. And when you lose that, then it's your time to come down. So we're going to come into Halasana now, but um, for those of you who are practicing with that idea of having six minutes perhaps in your Savangasana, then Hopefully, you've got your timer on for that. So, releasing the legs down. And when you come out of this action, you keep supporting your back body. So, as you unfold, bending your knees, keep your hands onto the back of the pelvis and just, just gently let the body completely release down yeah so the important thing is is just take your time now just take your time to be in this position you can remove your launch pad and just take a few breaths to recover so if you come down at the same time as us then do just take a few moments just a few moments to re-establish the breath, let the energy settle. And then when you're ready, so you don't have to keep with our timings, but when you're ready, you roll to your right side and then you come up into a seated position. And just take a few moments, as you can see here, Leo is in cross leg position, just finishing up her practice. So we hope you've enjoyed the inversions today. And if you haven't already subscribed, then please do subscribe to the channel and even click the like button. Thank you. Namaste.